Here is a new one. What would you say to a presumptive Republican nominee for president slash decorated Navy vet who says he is on the same side of any issue as is Osama bin Laden? Not exactly how one might have expected the death toll milestone in the campaign trail to merge on the campaign trail today. But Senator John McCain telling a group of vets in Chula Vista, California, that he and the leader of al-Qaeda and General Petraeus are all in agreement when it comes to the venue of the primary fight in the so-called War on Terror. For the first time, I have seen Osama bin Laden and General Petraeus in agreement. And that is the central battleground in the battle against al-Qaeda is in Iraq today. And that's, and that's what bin Laden is saying, and that's what General Petraeus is saying, and that's what I'm saying. Last April, the senator had been taking a much publicized stroll through a Baghdad street market. Violence on the ground in Iraq now making a trip to that same market by Senator McCain just last week. Impossible. Let's turn now to Paul Rykoff, founder and executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, also, of course, author of Chasing Ghosts, A Soldier's Fight for America from Baghdad to Washington. Paul, good evening. Good to be with you, Keith. Um, the Pew Research Center survey came out last week indicating that fewer than 30 percent of those polled knew to the nearest thousand how many military dead we had. They all were, this large number thought we had 3,000 or less. This has not yet resonated again as it was perhaps last year in the early stages of the presidential campaign, but flatly. How more, how many more men and women are going to die in Iraq depends on whether a Democrat or the Republican wins in November. Do you think there's going to be a point at which that becomes clear to the public? I hope so, but the public's got to pay attention. And the reality is that right now, the American public and large parts of the news media are tuning out of Iraq entirely. Mm -hmm. The news coverage of Iraq last month was down to 3% of the overall news coverage compared to about 15% last year. So Americans are, are tuning out of the war, and the media, it appears, can't walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. They've got to cover the economy, and they've got to cover the presidential races, but they've compromised coverage of the war uh, in, in its place. So I think we need continually to focus on the war, on veterans' issues, on this entire human cost of the war uh, throughout the entire campaign going forward. What uh, what Senator McCain had to say today would, I think, under other circumstances, have gotten sort of the uh, the lightning rod attention that anything Senator Clinton had said or Pastor Wright or anybody else in a, uh, a debtor spot in the political campaign. Is that, could that be turned into a Democratic ad waiting to happen, uh, an issue on which John McCain, Osama bin Laden, and General David Petraeus all agree? Sure, sure. I mean, that, that's, that's a campaign ad waiting to happen. I think what it, what it shows is, is this very narrow understanding of not only Iraq, but the entire war on terror. You hear people oversimplify who our enemies are, the battlefields. The reality is we're facing global threats, and they're not just military. They're political, they're economic, they're social. And, and this very narrow-minded understanding, I think, has really hampered the entire American dialogue on the war in Iraq. It's got to change. We've got to go deeper. And, and that's why our organization and others are call calling for a greater focus on Iraq by the media, by the American public. And we want th to put the campaign candidates on the spot here. Let's force them to drill down and show that they have an understanding of who our enemies are, what are the human costs, and what are the back-end costs here at home for veterans that are going to come and flood our VA hospitals over the next few years. Why has this notion taken hold that the surge, uh, Mr. Bush's escalation, which is what we used to call it before it had fancy, you know, driven names like surge, the troop escalation, more people being put in more harm's way. Where did this notion come from that it has been a success? Why did it take hold? Because there have been incremental violence decreases over the last few months, few weeks. And we have, again, a narrow understanding. We assume that there's only military ways of evaluating success or lack of in Iraq. So the social lack of success, the fact that we can't get water running, we can't get electrical grids working, we can't get people back in school, that's not really in the understanding of Iraq. It's this very simple analysis, black and white, about troop numbers, killed in action, and what's happening in Iraq. We need a much more robust, much deeper and broader understanding of what's happening in Iraq. The 4,000 figure, let me leave you with that, the Agence France Press calculated that 97% of those 4,000 have come since the White House declared mission accomplished. Could the argument not be made as we think about the, the somber nature of that number, that round number, that mission was accomplished as of May 1st, 2003, and that 97% of these, these men and women have in fact died in vain? Uh, you know, I, I don't ever say they've died in vain because as soldiers, we don't worry about the mission. We don't worry about the president. We don't worry about the rhetoric in Washington. You worry about that man and woman to the left and the right of you. Right. And we know that, you know, half the troops that have died are under 25 years old. There are about 2,200 kids that have lost parents in this war. And that's a human side of this war that soldiers and veterans understand profoundly. And, and we try to separate the politics and understand that our personal human cost is often misunderstood and very different from what you hear in the news or what the politics talk about. Yeah, the, the fatality and the, uh, the post 
post trauma of whatever kind, physical or emotional, is the same one way or the other. Paul Rykoff, Executive Director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Always uh, a, a pleasure. It's a strange word to use, but thanks for coming in, Paul. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate it.